everyone, Jennifer here. I am back on the blog and on the channel. I took a little break as a maternity leave after having um, our baby. And so I'm back now and I wanted to share in this uh, video about the birth story uh, with our son. Yes, we did have a boy and he came three weeks early. He is a complete and total joy and such a blessing to our family. We've just really been enjoying him so much so that I almost didn't come back <laughs> to the vlog, but you knew I was gonna come back. So here I am now. And in this video, I wanna share the birth story with you. I wanted to be very raw and real and honest in this um, video and tell you how it was because childbirth is such an incredible thing. And this is my fourth baby. This labor and delivery was very different than my other ones. So <laughs> I have got a story for you. My son is actually sleeping right now, but you'll get to meet him uh, at the end of the video. I'll try to wait till he wakes up and I'll come back and I'll, and I'll show him to you. Yes, those of you who follow me on Instagram already knew the news. I posted a picture a few days after I gave birth uh, with my son in the hospital. And cue the gardeners every time I shoot a video. Every time I shoot a video, the gardeners come. I apologize if there's any background noise. Oh so yes, I did keep uh, the gender a secret during my whole pregnancy because I wanted to reveal to you what we were having. So I already had three children. I had two girls, those are the older ones, and a boy who is two, and we also had another boy. So now I have two girls and two boys, and we could not be more thrilled. We actually did the gender reveal over Easter. Um, so I found out I was having a boy then, and it was really exciting. I, I don't know why, but I was so excited to find out that I was having another boy. So I just think it's gonna be so nice um, for my older son to have someone to play with. I mean, he plays with my daughters basically, all day long, but um, it'll be nice to have a boy for him to play with as well. And so someone he can kind of be a mentor to. So we are so thrilled to have another boy. Many of you have asked uh, what his name is. And for those of you who are kind of newer to my channel, um, I actually don't share the names of my children on the internet. It's just a safety thing. And just out of an abundance of caution, I'm that's like who I am. I'm very extremely suspicious and protective <laughs> of these types of things. I'm not saying it's always going to be like that. You know, uh, it's really funny because my family really want me to start a family vlog with all of them. And I love watching other family vlogs. I love um, having my children and my family in my videos. I think they just are better that way. So one day that might change, but as of right now, I just want to thank you for respecting our privacy and I don't share the names of my children online as of right now. So just, you know, to protect them. Uh, but yes, but I will tell you, of course, we had a boy. He was born three weeks early. He was six pounds and eight ounces, so he was a good size, thank God, um, you know, because he was early. All of my children were born early. The girls were both about two weeks early and both of the boys were about three weeks early. And uh, if you were watching my videos, you knew, I knew I was going to have the baby early. I knew I was gonna have him soon. My due date was not until September 27th, so I, I had him three weeks roughly um, before that. His pregnancy was different than all of the other ones, okay? This is my fourth pregnancy. I'm, I'm obviously older um, in this pregnancy, and there were just many funny things about it. I had so many early contractions uh, in this pregnancy. I had had them for months before I gave birth. Uh, you know, the Braxton Hicks ones. And I had those with the others, but not to the extent of this one. It was becoming a bit of a joke with my family because I would say, oh, I'm having another contraction. And they would say, sure you are. <laughs> you know, they kind of thought I was saying it to get out of work or whatever. Um, but it's true. I would have just regular contractions. They were not painful, but it's definitely a tightening of the stomach uh, that would hold for a few uh, minutes or, you know, seconds, and then it would dissipate. And I was just having so many of those. I went to see my doctor about a week before I gave birth and she told me that I was four centimeters dilated already. So I knew that, you know, something was going to happen soon. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know, you need to be 10 centimeters dilated in order to give birth. So I was four centimeters about a month uh, out. Anyway, so I, that whole week I was just convinced every day I was going to go into labor because I kept having these contractions. And so finally, uh, about a week later, I 
I just, I had one every 10 minutes and I said to my husband, we should just go to the hospital because I feel like I'm going to give birth. I'm not in pain, but I'm having regular contractions. So um, we went to the hospital and they checked me out and I was still four centimeters dilated. So they sent me home. And I thought, okay, but I knew something was different, you know, and thankfully I had my hospital bag packed. If you haven't seen that video, I will link a card for it up above, but I had packed my hospital bag a few days be before and I actually showed it to you um, on the channel. Um, so anyway, I had my bag packed and I thought something's different. I feel like it's going to be very soon. So we went to bed that night and then at three in the morning, I just woke up and I woke up from a very strong contraction and I was having actual pain in that contraction. So I thought, okay, this is it. It was like 12 hours after I had been sent home from the hospital and I said, I woke Ben up and I'm like, this is it. We are going to have the baby. So uh, he took me to the hospital and thankfully uh, my other children were staying with my parents because I, I had a feeling it was going to be that night. So we didn't have to worry about them. So uh, Ben took me to the hospital and I mean, I knew on the way there, it was like 3, um, 3.30 in the morning, I was having such strong contractions. So I knew that the baby was coming. I knew they weren't going to send me home. So when we got there, it was around 3.45 in the morning and they checked me out and I was six centimeters. So I'd really progressed from earlier that afternoon. And yes, the contractions just got really painful. So basically we are in the holding room, you know, waiting for my doctor to get there and just waiting to talk to people. And um, at this point, uh, they were, the contractions were coming very quickly and they were extremely painful. Now I'm gonna break here and talk really quickly about an epidural. If you notice from the thumbnail, it says I did not get an epidural and that's right, I did not get one. And I'll tell you why in just a second. But I did have an epidural for my previous three births. Uh, now before we discuss anything any further, I just wanna say in this video that I respect whatever your choice is with childbirth, whatever you choose to do. There's so many different uh, choices. You know, some women have home births, some women give birth at the hospital, some women have an epidural, uh, by choice. Some women choose to not have an epidural. Uh, some women have to have a c-section. There's just so many different variants here and I just want to let you know I don't judge you at all. <laughs> just whatever you have chosen, whatever was you know your experience, I just want this to be a place where we can all uh, support and encourage each other uh, rather than say you know oh I can't believe you got an epidural, I can't believe this or that. Okay so and I know that you all pretty much agree with me on this, you know. We all can choose what is best for us and our and our bodies with regard to giving birth. So, yes, I had an epidural with my previous three births because I have a very low pain tolerance and once those contractions start getting bad, I'm just in complete agony. So, I did have an epidural with those births. However, with this birth, I was actually uh, somewhat prepared to not have an epidural for a few reasons and that is because my labors are never long my children just come really quickly <laughs> so I knew that with the fourth child he might come so fast that I wouldn't have time to get an epidural another reason is is because I actually had low platelets uh, and that has to do with uh, your blood condition. And so they told me that if my platelets weren't up, uh, if the number wasn't up, that I would not be able to have an epidural, just out of caution, because it's actually dangerous to have an epidural if your platelet level is too low. Um, it could cause paralysis. Whoa, so when they told me that a few months ago, I thought, oh wow, you know, I, I might not have an epidural. So I was somewhat mentally prepared for it, uh, thankfully. Now my platelets did end up uh, coming up and I was able to have the epidural technically. So um, when, when the pain got really bad, you know, they kept saying, oh, the anesthesiologist is going to come in and I said, okay. But then the nurse finally came in and this is like one hour or so after I got to the hospital. The nurse came in and I said, you know, my contractions are so powerful and so strong. I just, I don't know what to do. And she said, let me just check you to see, you know, how far you've dilated. So I was six centimeters when I came in, you know, roughly 45 minutes uh, before. 
and she checked me and she said, oh wow, you're, you don't have a cervix anymore. <laughs> she said, you're 10 centimeters dilated. And I said, what? She goes, yeah, you're gonna be pushing any minute now. And I just couldn't believe it. It all just happened so quickly. And so the anesthesiologist kind of came in, he poked his head through the door and they said, you know, you could get an epidural, but it's not going to work. It's not going to activate quickly enough to have the baby. So I said, okay, well, obviously I'm not going to get one then. There's no point in getting one. So um, at that point I said, okay, I, I mean, here I go, I'm going to do this. So they wheeled me into the delivery room and my husband was with me and it all just kind of happened really fast. While I was mentally prepared that I might not be able to have an epidural, I did not do my homework on tips for natural childbirth, right? Because it is very different giving birth naturally without any pain medication than it is with an epidural. And I, I just didn't, I wasn't prepared in that sense. I, I'm sure that there's breathing exercises or visualizations or pushing techniques, you know, that I could have researched and I didn't. So <laughs> I was not prepared for that. So I'm gonna get really honest with you here. Okay, so we go into the delivery room and my husband's with me and he's just kind of helpless at this point. You know, Ben, he's just, he's standing there like, what can I do? And um, I am, it, it, it was really, really <laughs> painful. Again, I don't wanna scare any moms that haven't given birth yet. You know, maybe you're pregnant for the first time. Uh, but I am going to be very honest with you about how I felt and, and everything. So just be prepared for that. Uh, but there is a caveat that I wasn't prepared uh, to give birth without the epidural. So they move me in there and I'm thinking, oh wow, okay, this is, this is happening at any moment, here I go, you know? And the contractions were so strong and so powerful. So we're waiting for the doctor to come in and she was gonna come in at any moment. They had a standby doctor there to deliver the baby just in case she didn't, she didn't arrive in time. So then my doctor arrived and it was time to start pushing and they had to break my water. Once they broke my water, it wasn't as painful as it was. Uh, that pressure wasn't there. So it really wasn't as painful as it was. But then I started pushing and they were helping me and aiding me in pushing. Now, of course, I've done this three times, but with an epidural, it's, <laughs> it is a lot more calm and you don't feel the intense pressure and pain that you do uh, when you don't have one. So, uh, you know, Ben was holding my hand and he was coaching me and then, you know, the, the nurse and the doctors, they were there and, and helping me too. And I was pushing, uh, but the baby wasn't coming out because he was really high up. And I just, I panicked. I just went through this period where I thought, oh my goodness. I, you know, I'd pushed about four times, not even that many times, just about four times. And I was so physically spent and exhausted and I was in so much pain that I, I just, I thought, I, I can't do this. I was literally just thinking, I, I can't, I can't do this, right? So I, but of course I could do it. And I, and the, the verse, the Bible verse that came into my head throughout all of this was Philippians 4.13. And I kept saying that in my head. And honestly, without that encouragement, I don't, I don't know if I could have done it. I think I was gonna pass out from the pain. <laughs> anyway, so I'm there and I'm pushing and he's not coming out. So I continue to push and while I'm pushing, I tell you what, I was screaming so loudly. <laughs> I was screaming and there was one point and I will be very honest with you, I said this out loud and Ben was like, uh. <laughs> But I said, I'm going to die. I just kept, I just screamed out, I'm going to die. Because I, I, at that point, I was a bit delirious and I thought I was going to die. I thought I'm gonna either pass out, I don't know how they're gonna get this baby out. I don't know what's going to happen. I panicked because it, it, was, it was just that. It's like I was saying to Ben, it's like when you're on a roller coaster, a really scary roller coaster, and you're about to go on the dip and there's no getting off the roller coaster and you're gonna go down it and it's scary, right? That's how it was for me. So um, I, I, was, I screamed I was going to die. I was like screaming. So I felt really bad for any, any woman, maybe again, first time moms who were coming into the hospital for the first time and then they had to hear me, oh my goodness, I hope I didn't scare anybody away. But after that, after some encouragement, I did about four more pushes. So there were only eight pushes total. And 
the baby came out and he came out and it was super I was in such relief when he came out and they handed him to me immediately and I was able to hold him it was extremely emotional um, and yeah it I mean I just I kept saying to Ben I'm like that was crazy that was a crazy experience um, but so after all of that you know you know talking about how painful it was and how I thought I was going to die giving birth without the epidural was amazing uh, other than all the pain right it was just because i was so awake and i was so aware and it was just so uh i don't know it, it was different in a very special sort of way so um they gave me my son and of course he's just covered in all the goo and i'm just holding him and it, and it was just so so special it really was um and i remember with all my other three crying when I received my baby, you know, tears of joy, crying tears of joy. And with him, I didn't cry tears of joy, although I was extremely happy. I just felt so relieved <laughs> that I had made it and that he was out and I was just awake and I, I'm just hugging him. Uh, so that was, that was pretty amazing. And then after that, honestly, the body is just so amazing, the human body, because after I gave birth, I just, it's like I, I had a rush of, um, I don't know what it was, but uh, hormones or natural numbing or whatever it was, but I just immediately, my body just immediately felt normal. It was so weird. I delivered the placenta and I just there was no pain. It was like my body was releasing a natural painkiller or something. And I just immediately felt amazing. So having said all of that, I can absolutely see why women want to give birth without the epidural. Uh, because there's just pros and cons to both, obviously. Um, and I've done both. So I can see absolutely why women choose to not have it because the recovery is so much nicer and you just feel better. You're natural, you're not groggy. Plus I hate that needle that has to go into your back. On the flip side, you know, the pain is intense. So my tip for you is if, if you do plan to give birth without an epidural, to definitely come up with a plan to manage the pain. So breathing plan, I'm sure there's so much out there that you could research. I didn't research any of it. I was like a wild animal. <laughs> I was just completely taken aback by the whole experience. But it was such a beautiful experience. And my son was born and he was healthy. Uh, he did have a little bit of a low blood sugar when he was born. Um, those of you know, I had gestational diabetes again for this pregnancy. And because of the diet that I was on, um, I didn't gain weight for like the last month of the pregnancy, basically. And in fact, throughout the pregnancy, I only gained about 18 pounds. That was it. That was the least I've gained for any of the pregnancies that I've had. And so there were actually concerns that he would have a low blood sugar, which he did. Thankfully that came up. So um, he's fine, but yeah, he's been checked and everything uh, many times, but our son was healthy and he was born and I felt so relieved. <laughs> I felt so relieved after it was all over. So yes, that is the true birth story here. That's what happened in the connoisseur household. And, I, and Ben was just, in awe. I was laughing with him afterwards because I said, I'm sorry, I probably scared you because I was just shrieking and screaming and saying I was gonna die. <laughs> and, and he was very calm throughout the whole thing. And he said, no, no, he said, you know, I'm just amazed that you didn't swear. But I, I said, of course, I'm not gonna swear while I'm giving birth, that's not me. <laughs> so yes, that is, that is the story. That is how it happened. So uh, I'm shooting this video about two weeks after I gave birth. He's about two weeks old and um, we have just moved on with family life. He fits right into our family. It's just wonderful. The kids love him. The girls fight over who can hold him. They always want to hold him. They always want to do things for him. It's really sweet. Uh, my older son, you know, he's just a bit, he's only two. So he has accepted the new baby very well. I thought that he would be a bit more jealous or more needy, but he he's so distracted by his older sisters always wanting to play with him that he's been actually fine. So um, that's been good. Uh, the baby wakes up roughly every two or three hours at night and I feed him. The baby and I are staying in the guest bedroom. I've made it into our little paradise. So 
Ben wanted to give me the master bedroom, but I actually chose the guest bedroom because it's just, it's at the back of the house and it's quiet and peaceful. And I just really like small bedrooms that, you know, it has a beautiful view. So he and I are in the guest bedroom and you know, he just sleeps in the little bassinet and then I co-sleep with him as well in the bed. And it's just going really well. Um, I'm used to, now at this point after having four children, I'm just used to the cycle of it all. I'm used to getting limited sleep and I'm just used to it and I'm okay with it, you know? We took off two days to homeschool, that's it. You know, I just two days during the week and since then we have been back to it and it's just, everything has just worked really well. So the baby sleeps most of the time. You know, people forget newborns sleep. So he sleeps almost all day long. He wakes up a little bit. He likes to wake up in the early evenings and his eyes are very alert and awake and that's it. But he is such a blessing to our family. We are completely in love with this little boy and he's just been absolutely wonderful. So going forward, um, yes, I, you know, we're looking forward to just getting our lives back on track and just, you know, just moving on with life. I just have to say quickly that these dresses, you know, the two dresses that I got for, um, the postpartum phase, I absolutely love them. I mean, I love them. You saw I wore the polka dot one in the hospital and I just love them. They are so easy to nurse in. They're so comfortable, so presentable. Um, it's about two weeks later, so I do still have a little bit of a belly. Uh, I plan to just, you know, just take things easy. I'm back on my old way of eating. <laughs> um, I don't have to be on my gestational diabetes diet anymore. For those of you who are wondering about that though, because I did get a lot of questions about that, the diet was I had to eat um, six times a day, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then three snacks. And at any setting, I could not have more than 30 carbs. So that's it. And then I could have as much um, meat and vegetables as I wanted to. I could have fruit during snacks with a little bit of protein. So that was pretty much my diet and I stuck to it. Um, there were good things about being on that diet because it did teach you discipline. And, uh, you know, in my Madame Chic books, I talk about how snacking is so not chic. And what I really mean by that is mindless snacking is so not chic. Many people have to snack for, you know, medical reasons or you just get hungry and that's fine, but it's the mindless snacking that is bad. And so something that was nice about being on that diet is I had to record everything I ate. I had to eat at certain times and that really brought back the discipline of eating well. So. There are pros and cons <laughs> to it, obviously. But uh, I'm able to eat what I want again, and that has been good. I will look forward to slowly losing the weight. I will start walking soon. I haven't been exercising um, because I have been having, um, you know, a lot of back pain, and it's still really hot here as well. So once I sort of feel, you know, probably this week, I'll probably start walking again. I cannot wait to get back on the rebounder. <laughs> okay, it's in our living room. We perpetually keep it in our living room, by the way. And my whole family uses it. So my, my three kids use it and my husband uses it every single day. And I can't wait to get on there, but I'm not ready yet because, um, you know, just with the, the breastfeeding and my chest, you know, the changes going on there, as well as just having given birth recently, I can't jump on it yet, but I think probably in a month or two, I'll be able to get back on the rebounder. So that will be my plan for getting back into shape. And of course, I'll take you on the journey with me. Thank you so much for joining me today on The Daily Connoisseur. And if you are new to my channel, I would love to have you as a subscriber. I have some fun things coming up for you this holiday season. My son hasn't woken up, so I'll just take the camera in and you can just see him real quickly.